Hey everyone, this is DWS Darius and welcome to another day in the fish room. Once again, we're going to take another look at some of the major headlines of the fish room and show you guys what's going on. Welcome to the fish room at night. So right now it's 10 p.m. And the reason why I'm down here this late is because I want to show you guys these hundreds of Malaysian trumpet snails. So this right here is my 55 gallon planted aquarium, the low tech planting tank. During the daytime you can never see any snails. And that's because they're all nocturnal. The reason why is because they're afraid of my dwarf pea puffer. But look at them, it's just hundreds and hundreds. Now when I turn on the light, they're all going to start falling down. But let me give you guys a good look at just how many of them there are. Okay, so there's two options for you if you have this situation. One, you could go in with your hand and take out as many as you see um, manually, or you can make a snail trap. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make a little bottle trap for these snails, leave it in overnight, and um, see how many I catch. The only downside to the trap is that overnight, I may catch a fish or two, because in this tank I have, if we take a look down there, against that rock is a stone catfish can't really focus in too good but if you see that big rock right there work your way down that little thing against the rock is a stone catfish it's very small and one time I made a, a trap for these snails and I found a few of those stuck inside the bottle and you know too long in a bottle can be deadly for a fish so um, you definitely want to check that bottle first thing in the morning so that's what I'm gonna do in this tank I'm gonna set up a little snail trap and see how many I catch in the morning Okay everyone, so here we are and it is the next morning and I can already see that I have a lot of snails in here so we're just going to take them out and um, get a better look. So if I just have a simple Tupperware container, I'm going to get some tank water, don't need too much. Um, that should be good. Put that there and then I'll go ahead and grab that. And it looks like I didn't catch any fish, which is a good thing. And I'm gonna go ahead and toss that in there. Um, take out that. And get them all out. Look at that. That's easily. Look at that. Almost 100. So that just shows how many snails are actually in this tank. And I'm pretty sure there's a lot more. But, um,. Now what you could do with this, before I used to sell mine, I sold hundreds of them before. But I really don't like selling in the winter because when you calculate um, heat pack and all that, um, you really don't make too much from them. So I prefer to sell them in the summer. But being that it's winter, I'll try and add them to another tank. Specifically my 210 gallon aquarium because you know, dude, that is my predator aquarium and they do poop a lot. So these will help a lot with eating the poop. The only problem is that those predator fish like to eat these snails. So I'm pretty sure a large portion of them won't survive, but um, I'm put so many in hoping that at least a few survive because these things will live in a substrate and they will multiply pretty quickly. So even if I get lucky and get like five or six to survive out of this whole batch, um, they have a chance of repopulating my 200 thing on aquarium and being a good cleanup crew for that aquarium.
Okay everyone, so right now you're looking at my 125 gallon African cichlid tank and today I want to give you guys an update on a video that I did a couple of weeks ago. So if you remember that video that I posted about tiny black fish invading this aquarium, today I want to give you an update on those tiny little black fish, which if you take a look, there's one of them right there. Um, but anyway, we already know that back there in the back corner is the mother. She's a female mason reef. And now I think it's safe to say that this white albino labiotrophius fish, he's the father, mainly because, as you can see, she has more eggs in her mouth and I caught him spawn with her. So I'm thinking that he did it the first time as well. So we know that these two are the parents. And if we come back over here, we can see one of the, one of the juveniles. So in that last video, a lot of people were thinking that they were gonna be eaten. A lot of people said that I should have taken them out. But the thing is, these fish are very smart, and that's the main reason why I made that last video, to show how well these fish survive. I knew that once they reach a certain point, they wouldn't have to hide anymore, and they would swim openly. As you can see, this little guy, about one inch, he now knows that a lot of the threat or the risk of him being eaten is a lot lower. Of course, there still is a risk when you see the size of some of these other fish, but it's definitely a lot lower compared to what it was before. And you know, every day he's growing, and the bigger he gets, the lower that risk becomes. So um, today I just want to give you guys a look at these juvenile fish. They definitely are becoming residents of this aquarium. They're not going to be food. Um, that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because it's awesome to see how strong they are. It's kind of bad and scary because they are Mabuna. On top of that, they're hybrid Mabuna. From my experience, hybrid fish are just a lot more aggressive. So they can bring potential problems to the aquarium. But for now, I'm going to look at them I'll be curious to see how they come out and I actually took a close look some of them at some of them actually look like they have the mouth of this guy this right here you can see he has that weird shaped mouth it looks like some of them have that odd shaped mouth so it'll be cool to see how they turn out but um today I just want to give you guys a look at them as of today Today I'm going to give you guys a look at an unboxing, order some fish from Live Aquaria. So we're going to take a look at what I picked up. So Live Aquaria is a place that I ordered from before. The things I love about them is the fact that um, if any of the fish are dead, it's really easy getting a refund. Also, their shipping is um, pretty predictable. I could order. And I'm pretty sure when they're going to ship it out so I can know when to expect it. They use one day shipping. So that's why I love, well that's why I like shopping at Live Aquaria. The things I don't really like is the fact that um, all their fish are sold very small. So there's no chance that I'll get a fish large. All their fish, even the fish labeled as large, they're all pretty small. That's the one main disadvantage of shopping at Live Aquaria, in my opinion. Let me make sure I'm focusing for you guys. So we're going to take a look at some of the things I picked up. So these right here are the heat packs right now. They're pretty cold. Well, not cold, but they're not hot. Um, but I see movement, so let's take a look. So the first bag has one whiptail catfish and one African... It has two labels. I'm not. It has two labels on this bag, but there's only one fish in here. So this right here is a whiptail catfish. So let me see if I could get them focused in for you guys. So 
Mm -hmm. You kind of see them in the bag, but that's a whiptail catfish. And the reason why I bought this whiptail catfish is so that he could go in the planted tank right there in the center and hopefully he could clean up some of the algae on some of the leaves. If you saw my fish room update, you could get a better look at that algae. And that's my solution for cleaning up some of the algae. I got um, Juno down here investigating this new box. Um, after that, we have, this is a group of Danio. I also told you in that fish room update that in my 29 gallon Hillstrom Aquarium, my white cloud minnows those were jumping out so this right here is a bag of danio there's eight of them so they're going to go into that tank right there in the center and they should look good that's a cold water tank so there's no heater um, right now the temperature of that tank is about seven degrees fahrenheit so danio are a good choice for a tank that doesn't use heaters i'm going to put that to the side right here is an Oscar cichlid. I told you guys that I wanted to, oh, this guy is pretty big too. Um, I told you guys that I wanted to get more predators for the 210, and I was led to get another Oscar. So this is a common tiger Oscar. Let me see if I can focus in. He's pretty decent. I wasn't expecting him to be this big compared to um, just the usual size of fish that come from live aquaria. It looks like he's about three or even four inches, so that's pretty cool. So this is a tiger. Oscar, he's going to grow out in one of my aquariums until he's big enough to go upstairs. I figure it's good to get an Oscar cichlid because um, all the fish in a 210 they're big, but they're not bold. So I figure if I get an Oscar, he could really help bring out some of that boldness. All Oscars are just like known to be very bold and hopefully I could get that boldness with that guy. Right here I have a saltwater snail. I'm restocking on my saltwater aquarium, some of my cleanup crew. So right here I have two turbo snails. Um, next I have, this right here is the African spotted leaf fish. You can see he's very feisty. Um, I've wanted this fish for a long time. Very beautiful fish. Um, this fish kind of reminds me based on the videos that I watch of a miniature Oscar. Um, very small, he's gonna be growing, going over there and that 55 gallon grow tank and we'll see how he looks as he matures once again that's like a fish that i've wanted for the longest and now i finally had the opportunity to get one so back into the bag i mean the box right here i have some more snails you can see for my saltwater reef aquarium these guys are good for cleaning up um, all that hair algae i got a lot of hair algae growing on my filter and these guys are able to climb up there and get it so let's look at them, two of those. I don't really go as heavy as most people when it comes to my cleanup crew. I hear people buying like 20 snails, 20 hermit crabs, and just so many. I don't think it's really necessary in the reef aquarium because at the end of the day, when they finish eating all the algae and all the stuff that they have to clean up, they're left to die because it's more of them and not enough food. I think when you get a little bit, it takes them a little bit longer to clean up the tank, but at the end of the day, um, they last longer. So right here I have 10 hermit crabs for my reef aquarium. Same thing, only get 10 compared to the, for this size tank, people will probably get like 30 to 40. Um, right now I probably have about 10 living in there and I got another 10. And I think this is good because eventually, once again, when they eat up all the garbage or all the leftover food, eventually they're gonna be, there's gonna be a lack of food and they will fight each other and potentially kill each other. So I don't think it's worth going and buying um, just so many of them when you could get less. It takes a little bit longer to maintain an aquarium, but at the end of the day, they last longer and they get the job done. Just takes a little bit longer. And there's one more bag in the box. And this is another saltwater creature, a saltwater fish. And it's a coral beauty angelfish. Now, let's just flip the bag over and look at that. Oops, not even in view. But um, this is a very beautiful dwarf angelfish for my reef aquarium. And this guy also is pretty decent in size. The back does feel a little bit cold. Maybe it's about 70 or 72 degrees, which is pretty cold. So I'm going to get him in this tank and let him temperature acclimate. But yeah, this is another addition to my 
40 gallon reef aquarium. I kept the angelfish before the same type, but when my heater malfunctioned, it killed all the corals. When the corals were dying, they released toxin into the water and that killed my last angelfish. So I'm gonna get these fish in the bags and let them temperature acclimate. Um, then from there, um, see how they adjust. Okay everyone, so that's been a look at some of the major things that took place this week. As always, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you have any comments or questions, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see an update on all these aquarium fish that I just unboxed, be sure to subscribe because I have a video updating you guys on all the fish that I just purchased. And as always, big thank you for everybody who subscribed to the channel, everybody who shows the support. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you next time.